Hello and welcome to the latest wild side fishing fly tying video. Today we're going to be tying a wet fly. The one I use a lot as a tail fly, especially in the middle dropper position when I'm boat fishing. It's based on a dabbler and it's my take on a kind of black pearly dabbler. So I call it the black pearl. So we're using the size 10 hook today, uh, B175, the kind of usual candidate. We've we got black silk. Again, I'll just pull this around so you can see it's 80 uni thread, usual stuff again for wet flies. So we just start tying this down on the shank. Nice tight turns, bring it down about halfway. We're going to trim off the end. And we're going to put our tail in. Now we're, we're going to put this in quite early because we want this body to be absolutely level. And it's going to be brown mallard flank that we're going to use. So we, so we just take off some stuff from this. Just cut it off. There we go. We'll snip it off. And give it a little roll between your finger and thumb. And you get this lovely little tail. There we go. So we'll just sit that on top of the hook. We'll just give it Oh, let's give it a couple of loose turns first. Just check the length. It looks about right. And we're going to tie a rib on as well at the same time here. Now for the rib, we've got again silver oval tinsel. Now you can use thin wire for this. Personally, I prefer the the tinsel just because the wire some sometimes just chooses to snap, and there's nothing worse than doing all the work putting your hackle on and bang, it snaps. So the tinsel just keeps this option far, far, far away from you. So we'll, br we'll bring this down. There we go. Make sure it's nice and tight and then we'll cover everything up because this has to be absolutely black before we, we put in the body. For the body, we've got this nice even layer of black silk and we're going to use pearly Mylar, oh, right there. If you can turn your head around, you can see that properly. It's a pearl mylar tinsel. So we're going to cut a length and we're just going to get it up at the top. And you, you can take this straight off the spool if you want as well. I just prefer cutting it, it's easier to work with. Now we're going to give this two wraps for the body, so we're going to wrap it down first keeping it nice and tight and just slightly overlapping on the way down we bring it all the way down to where the, the tail starts and then we keep it really tight now and that's it, turn it around and bring it back up towards the eye of the hook and you can see the colour actually getting richer already when we, when we bring this back and this is the importance of having the black silk underneath it brings out the kind of pearly green colour so we just t tie that off. One, two, three. I got a fourth one around the front. And we'll snip it off. There we go. So we've got this lovely pearly green body. You can experiment with different colours of thread underneath. But the next thing we're going to do is put on a black hackle. It can be a cock hackle, hen hackle. I like using a reasonably reasonably, if you pardon the expression, a soft cock hackle. Uh, you don't want this to be too too spiky all the way down. So we'll just take off some of the fluff. There we go. And we'll just tie this in. Give it a few turns around here just to keep it in. There we go. We can pull back the stem and snip it off and after that I just like to give it a few more over it some folk bend it back but I'd never really bothered with it that much then we get the hackle pliers and snip them in now I like to give it a couple of turns at the start first just to make sure that we get some kind of profile there so there's one and there's two and from this point I like to bring it back now try and keep this even on the way down you see the gaps here should be relatively even. Because when you come down to the end here, 
you want to end it just there. This is really important. You keep this tight. You take the rib and you pull it over the hackle. See how tight that is? So tight I can actually put the hackle pliers down on the vise. Give it one turn round the back first and then start bringing it forward over the hackle fibres. You can give it a little wiggle or a waggle as you're coming through. It just stops trapping some of the fibres. And when you come to the head, oh wait there, it's just slipped a wee bit there. When it comes to the head, pull back those fibres and then bring it forward. And it just, it just gives you that kind of traditional wet fly look really that you're after. And then just bring the silk over the tinsel and tie it off. Now again, this is why I said earlier, I prefer the oval tinsel to the, the thin wire. If it snaps there, well, yeah, great fun. So you, you'll see also I'm using the curved scissors now. You get in really nice and close with these. Very good job to have in your fly tying kit. So that's the hackle on. Now we're going to start looking at the the, the shoulder hackles. We're going to have two. The first one's going to be this is a partridge feather. Now we're going to strip off all the soft fuzzy bit on the top. Now some people do it differently. Some people do it this way. This this is the way that I was taught years ago and it's still the way that I think works the best for partridge or any really soft fibred hackle so we're, we're going to pull everything back and leave that tip leave that little, little dent and we're going to tie our silk actually right where that little dent is you'll see here so you, you strip them back you've got, the, you, you've got that little point left now some folk would do it the other way around and use the point on the hackle pliers but I just cannot be done with that personally. It's just far too many breakages. Then you, on this thick piece of stem left, take your hackle pliers and well, actually wait there, I've just put them on a wee bit kind of skew if there. We'll just straighten them back up again. You, there we go, just that's it. It's much better this way. And you pull the fibres back with your finger and thumb. You want these fibres to be going over together. Bring it round. You can just pinch the fibres as you go around. There's one turn. You, you normally get two turns. You might just get three, but two is about right usually. They're not big hackles. But you get such lovely soft flowing fibres from Partridge. Then tie that off. And we'll just make sure that's nice and secure. Again, we come in with the scissors and just snip off. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're, we're going to put a cloak on this. Now, you can call it a cloak, you, you can call it a second shoulder hackle, whatever you want to call it. It's what gives the dabbler the, the typical dabbler look, shall we say. Now, we're going to use the brown mallard flank that we had before. You can use... Bronze mallard, I like the brown mallard personally for most of these flies. And there's lots of different ways you can do this. Traditionally you'd actually hackle it, which is a total pain. Uh, I prefer just to actually snip off the fibres. Now again, this is this is kind of personal preference stuff. But get those bigger fibres, pull them out and snip them off straight like that. And then hold them at the cut end. Don't let go of them. And straighten them up and you should get a reasonably straight line and then simply push what you've cut over the fly fold it over the eye and just give it a few turns and it gives you da -da -da -da, a lovely cloak going around the fly now some people like to do it even looser than that and let it spin round like a muddler head you can do this if you want I've never found it really makes much of a difference in all honesty if you want to have more, then you can do the same thing underneath the fly. But the most important thing is keep back from the eye when you tie it in because you want to come in like this and snip off the ends. If you do too many, it becomes a real nightmare to keep the eye clear of these butts. And this is again where the curved, the curved scissors come in so handy because you can get right in close. Now you can be as fussy as you want here uh, I'm not so fussy because we can tidy up 99% of this at the end anyway. So that's you've got this lovely uh, cloak 
of Mallard coming back. And the last thing we're going to do, we're going to put a couple of jungle cock cheeks on this fly. This is just an optional extra. Uh, it does certainly, I don't know, some people thinks, think it makes all it makes all the difference. Now, we're, we're going to use the small eyes down here. Uh, the big ones are really more for, you know, kind of salmon flies. Uh, you can use them as splits, but I I like using the whole feather for uh, for trout flies. So just hold the the end part of the eye. Don't pinch it too hard in case it splits, and just pull back all the fuzz, all the fluff. Pull it back and strip it off, and you should have the eye. If I bring this down for the camera in a second, that's it. You should have the eye, and the black. And that's what you want to tie in. And now, we get the second one. If I just pull that off as well, and we'll pull them together. The second one's like that. There we go. And we've got two cheeks. Now, you can line these up together, or you can tie them in together. I'll do this one for each just now singly. Once you get more confident with this, you can tie them in in pairs. Uh, the reason for doing this singly just now also is just to show you if you do it singly, you can give them little adjustments. You can move them around a bit. So we've got in the first one. Uh, I like where it is. We'll just give it a little tweak. You can just give it those little adjustments. You know when you're just not too happy sometimes? You can't do that if you tie them in in pairs. Let me get the second one. Just make sure it's the same length as the first one. There we go. And just give that a turn, a second turn. It looks good. They're both, they're both sitting just nicely there. And then we just pull back the fibres, go around a few times, and make them nice and tight and secure. Now, again, you can fold back the stems if you want, but I varnish my flies really heavily, so I wouldn't really worry about these falling out. So we just come and trim these off. And now all that's left to do really is tidy up the head. Now. It never ceases to amaze me watching people trim flies to perfection. When if you just, it's almost like a figure of eight part and you slide it under the eye and you can trim. I mean, that's, there's a little tiny bit there still. There's a tiny little bit of fibre underneath there, but in all honesty, I'm not going to bother about that. I mean, the trout aren't going to care about it, are they? So then we get the trusty whip finish tool. <laughs> The Stone Age pigtail tool, and we just slip it over one, two, three, four, five, about five, six turns for the extra safety. Pull up and trim. There we go. So, to show you the fly close up, here it is. Now, we're going to varnish this. And again, when I say that I like to varnish my flies heavily, I really do use a lot of varnish in one go. Uh, you shouldn't be, I kind of personally think you shouldn't be shy with a varnish. You slap on as much as you want, really. As long as you're not covered in the fibres, you're not really going to cause any damage, are you? I mean, too, too little varnish, it's just going to mean that your heads are going to come undone, uh, which is not really what you want, obviously, when you put time and effort into making flies. So we, should, we just get the hackle end from the the black body hackle, push it through the eye, and this is why you shouldn't worry about using too much because you can clean it out as easy as that. So we leave that to dry and that's your finished fly. The black pearl, a really easy fly to tie. Like I say, it's one of, it's one of the few kind of favorite flies I've got for the middle on a, on a cast. So don't forget this one, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> So we'll see you next time for another fly and I uh, hope you enjoyed that and yeah, keep it wild side. <laughs>